The murder of the Black Dahlia has continued to haunt Los Angeles and armchair investigators around the country. Some 75 years later, it's one of Hollywood's most notorious murder mysteries. A beautiful young woman was found dead in South Los Angeles. Her body sliced clean in half. Even the nickname Black Dahlia is straight out of the movies. In this video, we are going to discuss the Black Dahlia. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. Before starting the video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. The Blue Dahlia was a nightclub in a 1946 crime film. Newspapers adapted the title to fit the short murder case, and the Black Dahlia legend was born. Elizabeth had come to Hollywood hoping to become an actress. However, with no prospective jobs and little money, she turned to prostitution. Her last days were shrouded with mystery. It seemed as if she were constantly on the move. She was last seen at a diner in San Diego, leaving with an unidentified man. Some suspect that the man was Robert Manley, a hardware salesman who had dated her in the past. He was brought in for questioning but later cleared of any involvement in the crime. The state of the body left the police unnerved. To say the least, Elizabeth's entire body had been drained of blood. Hence, why she was so white. Her internal organs remained inside her body. Her intestines had been partly removed from her lower half and tucked neatly beneath her buttocks. She had suffered days of torture. She was burned with cigarettes, slashed on her breasts and face with a knife, and a rose tattoo had been cut from her left thigh. She bore a gruesome Glasgow smile. The corners of her mouth had been cut with a knife. Then, she'd been beaten about the head until her flesh ripped up to her ears. One possible cause of murder was internal hemorrhage on the outside of her skull, where she had been beaten with a blunt object. Steve Hodel was just five years old when Elizabeth Short was murdered. As a cop, he worked the same Hollywood streets Short once knew. I had a lot of murders where you had young runaways and within weeks they'd have a needle in their arm and they'd be doing tricks on Hollywood Boulevard, says Steve, who investigated 300 murders over more than 17 years. To Hodel, the Black Dahlia case was just another cold case, but after he retired, the case would jump back to haunt him. The upper torso was juxtaposed, just off to the left, about 12 inches, he says. The killer was sure that it would be found fairly quickly, as it was. Clearly, he wasn't trying to hide it. He wanted the notoriety. Six days after the body was discovered, James Richardson, an editor for the Los Angeles Examiner newspaper, received a mysterious phone call. The man on the other end claimed to be Short's killer and congratulated the press's coverage of the murder. He claimed that he would soon be sending Short belongings to Richardson's office. That same week, January 24th, a U.S. postal worker discovered a suspicious-looking manila envelope addressed to the Los Angeles Examiner. The contents of the envelope included Short's birth certificate, her social security card, photographs of her, and an address book with a few missing pages. The name Mark Hansen was written on the book's cover. A message posted together with newspaper and magazine letter clippings was also found inside the envelope. The investigation lasted for months, with police following every possible lead. In all, they knocked on 5,000 doors and followed 10,000 leads. 50 confessing Sams, as they were called, were interviewed. All of these so-called killers, including a woman, had made a false confession. Dr. George H. Hoddle had been a Black Dahlia suspect since 1949, when he was arrested for allegedly raping his 14-year-old daughter. The case brought him into LAPD sphere, and they were soon suspecting him of several murders, Elizabeth Shorts included. When police bugged Hoddle's house in 1950, he was caught saying, supposing I did kill the Black Dahlia, they couldn't prove it now. They can't talk to my secretary anymore because she's dead. They thought there was something fishy. Anyway, now they may have figured it out. Few murder cases ever presented as obscene a crime scene tableau as Elizabeth Short's butchered cadaver did. 
and few victims were ever so exceptionally glamorous and beautiful in life, which helps to explain the continuing fascination with the case even today. Some of that allure comes from the fact that Miss Short was drawn to post-war Hollywood, like the proverbial moth to a flame, to get into the movies herself. The witness, Jack Edgar, was head usher at CBS Columbia Square Playhouse, where radio shows were performed live for broadcast in 1950. Edgar told investigators that he saw Elizabeth Short there at least 20 times, and that on one occasion, just after New Year's Day of 1947, she was accompanied by a man whom he remembered as a Chicago policeman. Edgar said he recalled seeing the man's badge, a Chicago police badge. He recalled that at this time, Betty and the man were waiting in the patio area and were not in line. An usher who worked for Edgar brought the two to them, and he admitted them into the studio without tickets as a courtesy. Gordon Fickling was investigated into Short's death, but he had an airtight alibi. He was nowhere near Los Angeles the week Short was abducted and killed. Asked whether he held a grudge against Elizabeth due to the failed relationship, Fickling was able to produce friendly letters between the two they had written weeks after she'd moved out of his apartment and moved on to Hollywood. Fickling had even sent Elizabeth money, an ensuring media frenzy followed. Thanks to the brutal, misogynistic, and ritual nature of the killing, says Glenn Martin, former Los Angeles police sergeant and historian. She lived in Hollywood, had aspirations to be an actress. Martin said, The murder became a sad cliché, the ultimate warning tale. A starry-eyed young girl comes to Hollywood, and things go very bad for her, he says. In 1949, after being tasked with investigating Short's murder, the gangster squad came extraordinarily close to arresting Leslie Dillon after he sent a letter, under the pseudonym Jack Sand, to the LAPD's chief policeman psychiatrist Dr. Joseph Paul DeRiver. Dillon suggested that an acquaintance named Jeff Connors may have killed Short as revenge after she threatened to reveal an affair not considered proper by the average person. Dylan also knew a number of disturbing details about Short's murder that the police had been keeping secret. He said he believed she'd been murdered in a motel room. But after holding Dylan for a week, the police released him because they found Jeff Connors, who offered conflicting statements about his own connection to Short. In the end, Connors too was released. And, with the exception of a few notable but uncredible suspects over the years, the Dahlia case went cold. In the decades since, the Black Dahlia case has inspired university theses, art projects, and the name of a death metal band, as well as references in video games and television shows. In 2006, it even got the major motion picture treatment, an adaptation of James Elroy's best-selling novel inspired by the case. When the gruesome investigation was done, Elizabeth was at last interred in Mountain View Cemetery in Oakland. In the end, no charges were ever filed against anyone. Many confessed to the crime of confess gave testimonies, but they were all dismissed by the police, and some were charged with obstruction of justice. There is a formidable lack of enduring evidence, and most of the case's key players are long deceased. And that years later, Dylan named his daughter Elizabeth. To this day, this case is an unsolved cold case, with many new theories being formed all the time. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Stay safe, and we'll be back soon with another video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification for more videos.